This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, I'll be discussing NURBS surfaces. Very much like NURBS curves, NURBS surfaces are excellent design because of their ability to accurately represent freeform shapes. I'm going to start off the basic type of NURBS surface, the plane. Now we can see the wireframe that exists. All NURB surfaces have four edges and isoparametric curves. These properties can be seen by going to Analyze and Direction. I'll select the surface and right click and we can see some arrows that appear. We have a green arrow and a red arrow which show the direction of these ISO curves. The red arrow represents the U direction and the green arrow represents the V direction. We can change or reverse the direction of these curves by clicking U reverse or V reverse. You can see that now these arrows have changed their direction. We can also swap them by clicking the swap UV option. Now the green arrow will go right or left and the red arrow will go up or down. Surfaces also have an inside and an outside also referred to as a front face and a back face. This can be seen by these white arrows, which are called normals. Normal is another word for perpendicular. The normals are always on the front face of the surface. This is also considered to be the outside of the surface. We can click the flip option and change the outside or the front face to be on the bottom. I'm going to right click and finish. As I had mentioned, all surfaces are made of four bounding edges. You might ask yourself, well, what if the surface doesn't appear to be made of a rectangular shape? For example, a circular surface. I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to create a circular plane by using the planar curves command in the surface menu. I'm going to select the circle, which is a planar curve right click and now we have a planar surface. Although this object doesn't appear to be made of four edges, if we turn on the control points we can see the underlying surface. This circular surface is a trimmed surface whereas this rectangular surface is an untrimmed surface. So Rhino understands that there is additional data here because this particular surface is trimmed that extra data is ignored for shading and object creation purposes. We can show that untrimmed surface by going to Surface, Surface Edit Tools, and Untrim. I can click on the edge that I want to untrim and right click, and now you see that we have a rectangular surface. I'm going to go ahead and shade these surfaces in. I'm going to add some flexibility to this surface. You can think of a NURBS surface as a flexible sheet of rubber. Just like the NURBS curves, the more control points that are in, or the more ISO curves that are in the surface, the more flexible that surface is. If I go to Edit and Rebuild, select the surface and right click, you can see the current control point count in the U and the V direction is 2, which will be increased to 10, and the current degree is 1, which will be increased to 3. I'm going to click OK. You can see now the ISO curve, hence the control point count, has increased. I'm going to turn on the control points, and we can see that now we have a lot more editability in this service because of the number of control points. I'm going to drag one of these control points perpendicular to the construction grid by holding the control key and the left mouse button and dragging this up. You can see now the ISO curves have made a new form. The shading doesn't exactly match up with the ISO curves. The ISO curves are the true surface itself, whereas the shaded portion is an object which is called a rendering mesh. The rendering mesh is an approximated faceted surface. We can help see these facets by going to perspective and choosing flat shade. Now you can see 
that we've turned off the anti-aliasing and the shading, and we can actually see some of these facets. Rhino creates this rendering mesh out of quads, or four-sided faces, and tries, or triangles, which are three-sided faces. Depending on the settings, Rhino may or may not create an accurate representation or shaded version of the NURB surface. To increase the resolution of the rendering mesh to better represent our actual surface, we can go to Tools and Options, choose Mesh, currently we're set to Jagged and Faster, and we can choose Smooth and Slower and click OK. Now you can see we have a better representation, and if I zoom in, you can see some of the triangular facets and rectangle or quad facets. I want to go ahead and turn flat shade back off. And now you can see the surface where the rendering mesh has been smoothed out. And the rendering mesh is what is used to calculate the ambient inclusion that can be seen here and the shading. This concludes the basics of NURB surfaces.